Hey guys, uh, this is Lucid, and welcome back. We are jumping back into our game with Airmore. And, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we're on turn 37, I believe. And Pangea is staging a little bit of an uprising, which we're not very happy with. I think we're on turn 37. Isn't that right? Uh... Oh, wait, we already did this one. Yeah, this was the Harpies. One second, we're on turn 38. I'm going to pull that up. It's like, this looks familiar. <clears throat> yeah, um, and so Pangea, yeah, still busy doing an uprising. Here we have uh, an assassination attempt by a Dryad. Swarm spam, as a Dryad does. rip and that was exactly what we didn't want we didn't want his capital getting back up because now we can have dryads sieging pangea forts with dryads in them not so good man and it's not like he didn't make them before he was fighting a 2v1 against me and nazca and he has all these incas because he stole so many nazcan um uh commanders so anyway now we have found a site we have found Okay, we got unlucky because we got attacked by barbs. Well, okay. We got unlucky because we got... <laughs> not unlucky. We were attacked by Pangea, which was not a matter of luck. It was a matter of tact. And uh, Pangea was unlucky because uh, his misfortune scales, which were destined to attack me with barbs, instead attack him with barbs and kill all of his white centaurs. <laughs> so in a way, we were actually lucky. But... Uh, we also found a Well of Pestilence and an Enchanted Tomb before we bailed. So that's actually really good. What that means is pl plus two death income. <clears throat> when we get this, we'll knock us up to 30. Um, so that's really, really big. Um, over this way, we can see Naba attacking over here, some dire wolves. And let's just we'll do this on the map. It's more fun. Uh, Pangea decides to attack on top of my fort. Kind of trap people here. Copy that. Um, he also attacks here, which is a bit annoying. Um, yeah. I don't think I take it this turn because I'm worried about just dogpiling on top of this. We've got, we're moving a lot in. What I have figured out, because I went and tested it, I made a little... Monoliths are one of the things. They're pretty hard to... They're tricky to kill, right? Because, like, you can send in a thug that could solo a monolith, but the monolith AI often will get better if there's just one guy near them. And, like, for this guy, he would almost definitely dust to dust if I sent the Timu in alone. If I send him with a bunch of guys, the risk is the thug won't get close, and then the battle will time out. Um, so that's annoying. What I figured, though, uh, in my tests is that Lictors will kill it most of the time. Sometimes they'll run, though. They'll get scared because they have morale. Or non-perfect morale, like undead. We have 50. Uh, Lictors can run. So, anyway, sometimes they run, but a lot of times they would kill the monolith. So the plan is to get, like, 50 Lictors, bless them, send them in, and hope for the best. Um, so anyway, that is the plan. Uh, so I need to accumulate Lictors here. Meanwhile, in Scalaria land, we attack over here. with a mighty large force, and there's just PD. Uh, and that is the only battle with Scalaria. So Scalaria playing reasonably passive. I don't know if he's waiting to tech up to something. He also hasn't been in a ton of games. He's not new, but he hasn't been in a ton. He's a little new to the multiplayer scene. Um, but we can see he has a tremendous, even though we killed 2,500 down here, and there's probably another 400 in the fort. So this is moving in up here. This army somehow is off of this. I don't know what happened. It looks like there was some kind of defense mounted. Really too bad I'm not seeing the, how the war is going up here, uh, with Jotunheim. Um, but yeah, you can see there's just a tremendous amount of long dead and lictors here, so... That is going to be a painful thing to try to deal with. Um, but we've popped the fort. We're going to be storming it. If he wants to ride out and fight us, so be it. Um, it's only going to get... That's, like... The thing is, 
Like, if you give me this army, I can probably script it to kill this. Scalier's just much stronger Dacian. Uh, depending on what research they have. So it could be he's waiting for a research thing, but um, it's only going to get worse. You should keep telling yourself that. And that is how you drive forward into the face of what seems like a very bad bad plan or dangerous adversary. Okay. Um, and I think that's actually about it for this. Um, yes, Storms 3, if you recall last turn, he timed out the battle with the uh, not the monolith, but the, anyway, the Nazca rock. And, uh, yeah, anyway, comes back in to clean up. And, uh, yeah, so that's the end of, uh, of Nazca. Sorry, poor ally. But, uh, you got elfed by the sea elves. Um, and so anyway, there's a few more places left. Like, this hasn't been taken by Nazca, and this hasn't. So he's probably gonna move up and take these. I'd like to get this province, too, over here, the Haunted Woods which still has knights there. I would think this is a misfortune event, though it could also just be the original Indies, but you can definitely get attacked by knights and militias as an event. <clears throat> We're going to come in here with a few uh, Skelly Bros and uh, hanging out with these uh, barbarians. Uh, skelly Bros do pretty good against barbs. Um, the fact that the barbs hit super hard doesn't really matter because we die in one hit anyway. And the javelins do pretty good work against uh, barbs. Um, and then they don't have a lot of armor, so we are going to one-hit kill them. So it'll probably take some attrition, but I don't want to, like, I don't have a ton in the area, and I don't want to waste a single turn uh, of this death income if I can. So we're going to come back and try to take this immediately. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, our kind of devotion to laying siege to Pan's Cap means we're not taking some of this other stuff. Now... I probably could have arranged a stack to come out, but I'm having deja vu or whatever you want to call it of uh, Pan, you know, coming back out, spamming Swarm, and uh, yeah, generally killing my stack again. So we're just going to make sure. Um, but I do need to take this stuff back. It also makes me look a little weak to Relay, which I'm not very excited about. So that's basically it for this turn. We're going to go ahead and go to the next... Oh, well, yeah, we're sieging this. There's not too much to talk about over here. You know, if I were min-maxing, which I probably could have, I probably could have laid this fort to siege just to stop production and stuff. That probably would have been a good move. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and go to... It's not really min-maxing, it's just playing the game well. Let's go ahead, go ahead and go to the next turn. Turn 39... Um, we found two more sites, the Trapped Lights and the Moon Mirror. And Trapped Lights, plus one fire, and Moon Mirror, one air, one astral. So quite nice, and this is Putra Skater. And uh, yeah, so we're finding sites almost every turn. And we have a battle. Scalaria rides out to attack in the Silver Grove. And this is another very large force. Um, this time he has mage support. These are thaumaturgs. You can tell they look different. Um, and he's got this guy with some air gems. Um, I'm wondering if he went conjuration. Uh, and he's also got some cultists, but not a ton of cultists. This is much more like a mage army. So, <clears throat> yeah. Let's see what's, what's inbound. So he is doing a communion. <laughs> Which is not great for me. Um, I wonder if he has an air random to do. Summon Earth Power now. I think he's going to do air elementals. So yeah, summoning air elementals. Let's see how many slaves he has. And there's a slave. Okay, here's a Grand Thaumaturg. So he's a master. 11 slaves, magic boost of 3. That's a pretty good number of slaves. Um, if we count the number of mages total... Uh, this is, these are two per tile, about, on average, and there's six tiles, so it's about 12, and it's about one and a half, and that's about, um, it's about, and then plus these two, probably like 17, probably like 19 mages, so I think he has like eight masters, 11 slaves, something like that. Interesting. Uh, he cast Light of the Northern Star, which is at least Conjuration yeah, well, he's at least Conjuration 5, because he has these air elementals. <clears throat> Conjuration pretty okay. 
but not great for Scalaria in terms of research targets, uh, especially versus me. And these air elementals I'm not really going to care about much. Uh, so let, anyway, let's resume and see what happens. Uh, we see mind burns coming out, fanaticism drop, protection of the sepulchre coming down. So I guess he doesn't have anti-magic. Because you normally wouldn't do Protection of the Sepulchre if you're doing Anti-Magic too. And Anti-Magic is like the spell he needs. Now, on my side, you can see the Sacred's pouring in in front. I do want them to take a lot of the hits from the Mages, because I want to do Blood Vengeance back on the Mages. And we've got these guys beelining to the back. All the way to the back. These guys have gotten stuck. Okay, these guys get stuck here in the treasure. I didn't quite make it all the but we have a lot of sacreds. And our magic weapons are going to allow us to deal with these air elementals pretty well. Yeah, you can see he got hit there. Got knocked down from a size 6 to a size 3. Um, yeah, pull from the grave. Solar ray is coming down. Uh, and it doesn't look like we've killed too much in terms of the mages. Um, we killed some of the priests, and no anti-magic making a big difference here. Meanwhile, our guys have a decent bit of MR, like this guy's got 18, because we've been spamming out uh, Protection of the Sepulchre, maybe more than him. But not everybody has it, like this guy didn't, he fa it's a roll, right, it's a random roll to see if you get it. And the more MR you have, the less likely you are to get additional MR from the Power of the Sepulchre. pull from the graves. Back here, this, oh, this guy just got yoinked. Um, it looks like the Thaumaturgs have decided that they want to do pull from the grave. Uh, it could be, there's a few things, it could be they're out of range of wither bones, and the things they are in range of wither bones, like these, you know, are too far away, or it could just be the HP density is going to make, and the low fatigue cost of pull from the grave is going to make banishment a little bit of a better, pull from the grave is banishment is going to make that a slightly better choice in the AI's mind than things like Wither Bones, um, which is only AoE 1. Thunderstrike. Okay, so he's got pretty high evocation, too. So those are little odd choices for him to have that and not anti-magic. You know, if he was fighting somebody else, maybe he thought we were going to be, uh, be Skelly Rose and just be friendly the whole time. But I think for me that's a no-go, because there's a point in the game where if he plays well, which I think you always assume your opponent's going to make the right decisions, where if he plays it well, I just have it. There's nothing I can do. Um, and we are slowly, slowly, slowly chewing our way through. But this is not like the last fight. The last fight, I took losses and it was expensive, but... He's also apostasy in some of my guys. Like you can see he's still one of my knights. Um, but last fight was I, I soundly won. This fight it looks like I'm gonna win. But at grave cost. It looks like they've retreated. Scalari has routed, yeah. Makes sense they have HP routed now. Um and yeah, their stuff is going to dissolve. These guys have to wake up. They were all nice and fatigued out. But, you know, he, he used his communion. He didn't burn it out. It was set up to go for a long time, even with off-path casting. So that was good communion balancing. I think the main thing is he didn't have anti-magic. I think if he had anti-magic, he might have won that fight. Because it was close. I think, I, in fact, I'm, I'm quite sure he would have won that fight if he cast anti-magic. Um, but as it stands, we barely claw our way through. Um, and this is just painful. I mean, this is just painful. Let's look at the, the ledger. Uh, we, well, on his side, he lost everything, just about. 
Um, we killed a lot of thaumaturgs. It was 16 thaumaturgs. So this will put a hurting on his research. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the equivalent of killing like 30 cultists. But we also killed 15 or 6 cultists. We killed a grand thaumaturg, one of his adepts of the Silver Order. God, Adams of the Silver Order is so good if you're Scalaria too. Especially you get uh, Mass Flight kind of early. You rush. I think if you have these guys, you don't go like for Conjuration through Air Elementals and stuff. You just rush Mass Flight. If you get Mass Flight before other people have Storm or Storm Staffs, they are in big trouble. Including Airmore. Because um, he has the numbers advantage in almost every fight he's ever going to take. So uh, Mass Flight is so good when you have the numbers advantage. Um, and then, yeah, you can see we lost a ton. We lost more than half of our of our knights, and we lost more than half, or about half. We lost about half of both, but a little bit more, of knights and our lictors, and then everything else just about got killed of ours. So was it worth it? I mean, it depends how you measure it. I, I think it moves us a small step closer to victory with Scalaria. But it dramatically weakens both of us. Uh, I mean, this is a ma this is several turns of production of, of sacreds for me, especially from the knights. It's probably like three or four, probably like four turns of knights, and uh, probably two turns of lictors. And with what turn we're on in the game, turn thirty nine. I mean, that's not insignificant. Um. Yeah. Uh, but then we have a battle in the fortress outside or inside the fort where we just had the battle and we just have a pretty scrappy so this is going to be like a very proud force it was going to come in and, and conquer and now it's just scrapped together with the beleaguered remnants of the once mighty Airmorian army and we just take that fort uh, we also, this is us going against these barbs, which you look at this and you look at, normally barbs are scary. Barbs are really not that scary for Airmore. You can see the javelins doing good work, especially here where it's a cave. It's like extra not scary. See the javelins very effective and they're about to route now. And with both javelins launched, our guys are going to run into melee, and that is the end of the barbs. So not even really close. And, um, you know, we could have gone in with a bigger force, maybe taken a couple. Uh, we don't really care about 14 long dead. So better to get the two death gems now. Uh, province income. We got an earth gnome. Uh, province income went up. All these good events, which don't really help us. I think actually we might have population still there. Um, nine air gems is nice. And then a mound king. Catching a bunch of scouts. Um, yeah. So now the question is what do we do? Um, because we are a bit in shambles. Um, and we could retreat. We could retreat. I think. What, what we do here is we patrol. If he's going to send a force to raid, we're going to catch it. So we're patrolling with these guys. We're reanimating with our Holy Four. Uh, that's going to get us two lictors. And I'm moving in some more dudes here. I, prob I think I probably should have gone on the offensive a bit more, but I don't know what he has back here. Um, and I suspect, from what I've been told by other players, that he has like a 1,000 or plus more troops on the Satis border, which is over this way. So I suspect there's a ton of troops over here, and if I run in with just, like, with all I have here, and I run into another thousand stack, I'm dead. And then I'm going to lose all these forts that I've just taken, which I don't want to do. So we're going to reanimate and patrol. It might have been better to go on the offensive, like, attack here, some kind of unpredictable moves, attack here. But no. Um, we've also got major reinforcements headed south. We've got, like, ten more lictors coming in here. We've got a few more knights coming in here. We've got significant you know 13 lictors 16 knights all coming in here we just have this huge logistics flow of uh sacred and normal troops coming in from the central part of our empire south and then up into scalaria um also i was trying to catch i had a timu or winter out 
uh, trying to catch um, some of these Pangean Raiders. And uh, we were unsuccessful, so I've got Itimu moving back over in here. Um, yeah. And then we're going to move these guys over this way. Um, these are going to come from the cap. We're going to try to take all this stuff back from uh, Pangea this turn before Relay starts getting feisty. And, uh, yeah, I think that's basically it for this turn. Let's go ahead and go to the next turn, which will be turn 40. This will probably be the last turn for this episode. Turn 40, we get a few more archbishops, as one does. We found another magic site, a Bog of Strange Lights. And, uh, yeah, plus one water, plus one fire. Very nice. We're site searching a lot of Pangea's lands now. Um... So yeah, this is a pretty pretty solid site. And our gym income, if you look at it, I don't think we've looked at that graph in a while. It's looking pretty sharp. Like, we start off with Airmore with a little higher, like everybody else is kind of down here, and we're like right here. Um, but yeah, we're doing pretty good. I, I, would, I dare say we're the gym leader right now. Um... We can't, we don't have as broad a site searching pass as some other nations, but it's, you know, it's okay. Um, okay, we're pinging Scalaria, and we could have actually locked his cap down for a turn. He didn't move anything in, so it's kind of making me wish we had done that. I was thinking he would move in major reinforcements and have them patrol. The Yan Amir are coming in here, and uh, it's kind of interesting. He's got three with 13 Yan Guard. Vanguard. Um, well, I'm trying to figure out what they. Okay, so they're not thugged out at all. He's just got. Okay. They're just three and thirteen. I was uh, the high ratio of Janamir to the guard. I was wondering if he had them as thugs. And then here we can see Relay attacking us. We had taken this from Pangea. Now, unfortunately, our knights get in first. I think if our knights went in at the same time, we'd be in a bit better shape. The meteorite guard is so good. Look how good they are. That high protection. Uh, we end up causing a route on them. Uh, but then I think we're routed now, too. Yeah. So we did a fair amount of damage. We killed 24 Meteorite Guard, and these guys don't grow on trees. I mean, they take a lot of resources. We would have won this um, if we were we had better... I mean, we weren't expecting it. <clears throat> like, if these guys were on fire and attack right away, so they got in... It, the problem was basically these guys got focused on before these guys came in. If, if we fix that, we definitely would have won this fight. So that's a bit annoying. Um, this is also a little bit of a cheeky... Um, a cheeky play because these were both mine uh, raiding from Pangea earlier and uh, he kind of was like oh I've got an army here might as well take it knowing that he might bump me um, and the nap sticklers may say well that was you know kind of mine because I had it a turn ago and that's a violation of the nap I mean it's not a violation of the nap but what it is is it's cheeky it's very cheeky um, and I've got my hands full a little bit right now, so I'm not going to make too many noises. Um, okay, I don't think we're breaking through this turn, though I might have been able to give it a shot. We have certainly enough archbishops to do it. What I'm worried about a bit, and I think I've got my god coming in. I, I didn't mention this, but the problem we've had... Uh, the last time we stormed, is there was a huge stream of um, of bugs from Swarm filling up the gate. The guy, his monolith made just an absurd number of bugs. Meanwhile, he had a few priests who were in the back that were just banishing people. And Pangea has a regeneration bliss. And he had some MR gear, especially like on the Inca. And that Inca killed so many guys. And no matter how many he killed, he was not dying from blood vengeance. 
Um, and so what I've decided, we're not doing that again. We're not playing that game. Um, I'm going to Foul Vapors them, because even though they have regen, they do not have poison resistance. So I'm, and he's not going to expect it. Um, so anyway, we're bringing in our god, and we're going to wait for Taxes to get there. And as soon as Taxes is on top, Taxes is going to Foul Vapor the crap out of them. Yeah. Uh, we are moving Winter off to go deal with these knights, too. Uh, over here, we're kind of checking out the situation between Relay and uh, Namba and End. And in Scalaria land, um, we are indeed moving on top of his capital. Um, this time with a reasonably big force. He didn't seem to want to patrol, though he did move in more guys. Or moved in some more, but I think this could also just be from reanimation. We also see Jotunheim going back on the offensive, uh, knocking this fort down. And uh, before, if Scalaria's attention was made, I don't I have no idea how much he committed up this way to deal with Jotunheim. Um, but he definitely is going to be much more focused on me now that I've taken two forts from him and one of those forts is in his cap ring and I'm potentially going to be attacking his cap. So hopefully that makes some space for Jotunheim to uh, make some serious hay and take some Scalarian infrastructure, which would be really good for Jotunheim. <coughs> I mean, um, for me, I'm going to despoil the land once I'm here for a while. But for Jotunheim, it's like free forts, which are going to be mages every turn. Like, I don't get mages and stuff. I, I get some free spawn. But um, for, especially for living nations, conquering Scalaria is like a very... The, it's very expensive. can be very hard. But the return is great because you get all these forts. So anyway, Jotunheim moving into position... And yeah, we're just going to go on top. I d this is a kind of weak army, but um, I've got reinforcements coming in. So all these guys who are here are going to make it up to this fort. Um, and assuming we don't have a battle this turn, like a major battle this turn, I've also got mercs, some of these shooting mercs, which should help versus um, uh, undead chaff you know they'll just be lobbing shots into the undead so i'm sure they'll get some kills um yeah and presumably these guys who make it up here this this coming turn will be able to join me on top of scalaria's cap for the turn after um we i do not think we are strong enough to one turn pop it this is a 500 fort or it's a 300 fort and with this these many guys inside i doubt we're gonna pop it but that's play we're also doing small little raiding squad over down here uh, I've informed Satis I'm doing this. I want to avoid bumping Satis. And hopefully, I have no idea what's going on over here again. But my hope is that I don't really want, like, I'm I'm really not being greedy here in terms of, like, wanting a lot. I just need Scalaria dead. Uh, perfectly, f the more they get, the better. And the sooner the war is over, the better. Um, so hopefully Satis takes a bunch of this stuff while hopefully I'm getting... And I'm kind of fine being the whipping boy, too. You know, like, taking up a bit more of Scalaria's attention. In my opinion, if you play Airmore, you deserve to fight Scalaria. It's just, you know, it's some kind of cosmic justice that you had it coming. So, anyway, I feel it's kind of deserved to take uh, a bit of the brunt of the load. And he's such a hard counter for me as the game goes on that... I feel compelled to, you know, like the time is of the essence must take Scalaria down. Okay. So anyway, we're going in. Um, I think that is it for this turn and probably for this episode. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time and good night.